Hey Legionnaires and welcome back, we're here with another Thrones of Britannia battle for you today or well, the siege battle to be precise and uh, yeah this is day 3 of siege week I hope you're enjoying so far we've had Rise of Mordor and we've had 12-12 and today we've got Thrones of Britannia and yes we have an excellent 2v2 siege battle for you today we have uh, with the radius mod on we have Bedderborg down here we have Wessex and we have Dive Flynn and the Normans over there. So we are in for an excellent one. This has got about 20,000 men on the battlefield. So this is going to be a huge, huge seed. So I hope you guys enjoy. If you do, please remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment to show your support. And let's try and hit that 1500 marker, guys. I'd just like to thank you all for the so far, with all your support so far. Um, did an excellent job, and let's just keep it up, guys. Um, but yeah, so, obviously we've seen Better Borg before in one of my past videos. Um, it's a pretty cool faction. They've got very similar units to some of the uh, other Viking factions. I want to kind of have a look, quick look at some of the Wessex troops that are new. There is going to be a little bit of lag, obviously, because of the uh, amount of uh, troops on the battlefield. I do apologize. Um, but yeah, we have some Earls. I think these are Earls? Veteran Thanes? Yeah. These guys are definitely new. This is not a faction from the main main game. Um, yeah, they look very cool. They look very similar to the Thanes already. I presume that they've just got some better stats and uh, maybe armor. Um, and then there is another one I saw was Noble Swords. These guys are definitely new uh, as well. They, uh, yeah, you don't get these guys. They also look quite cool. I like their armor. It looks very, very cool. And um, they definitely look like they could be a match for a lot. And then there's Elite Axemen. These guys also are definitely uh, not in currently. Again, they don't look massively different to some of the other units. Um, it's very hard to differentiate in this very small time period. Um, but yeah, they just got like an axe and a shield, which is kind of cool in fairness. Uh, I do like the kite shield with an axe. It kind of is a cool combo. But Wessex is now taking the gate here um, with the units that he's put onto the tower. We do have a small clash here. What do we have in here? Feared Axeman finding some cavalry and some sword hearse here. And this is, I guess, the first engagement of the battle. Um, yeah, I don't imagine these feared axes are going to last very long. Looking like they've got no armor and no clue what they're doing on the battlefield. And they're getting chopped down by the sword, sword Herseer. And there you go, they're already routing. Let's have a look and see how the Normans and Dyflin are starting off. It looks like the Normans are giving ground. Looks like they're not going to even defend this area. It's quite a good idea to defend up here on this, uh, this ridge up here. We've got some Norman chosen archers focusing down some Eastman Royal Guards. Um, I wouldn't actually be able to tell you what factions are new for Dyflin because I've rarely played Dyflin. Um, so I'll just go through them and you can have a look and see what they are. We've got Eastman Royal Guards here. I don't know if these are new. Like I said, don't really know. I haven't played Dyflin often enough. Um, but then we've got other units out here. We've got Eastman uh, Royal Spears. We've got Eastman Royal Spears. We've got a lot of East Eastman Elite Swords that... But, I mean, you'll see all these guys in the battlefield. We've got some Eastman Wood uh, Kerns. They kind of like, sound cool. They probably are new, I imagine. See, I don't know. They, they sound like they might be. Um, we've got Veteran Hunters. I think these guys might be new. Veteran Hunters. Just using the veterancy is uh, often uh, something added by Radius, I found. A Royal Huskals. Uh, they're definitely probably not added. Berserkers. We've got lots of Berserkers here, actually. Yeah. Okay, so that's basically it. Normans, I'll probably have a better chance. They've got a pretty small roster. Um, Norman Chosen Archers might be new. I, that's one of the ones I can't really tell. Norman Elite Infantry definitely is new. They do look awesome. Oh, I do like those checkered shields. That is pretty nice. Big Nose Guard. Kind of a, a bit ugly, that. Um, but it's, at least it'll protect his nose, I guess. All I can say, he's got a lot of Flemish crossbows here ready. These guys are definitely not a new uh, unit. You can already get them. What have we got here? Main infantry, again, not new. This is a thick line, I've just realized. Thick with three Cs. Like, there is no way they're breaking through that line. Uh, Norman Chosen Warriors. Um, again, definitely new. Haven't seen these guys before. Um, I'm quickly trying to go through because I do realize that on the other side there is fighting now engaged, uh, happening. And I think he's got the same Norman foot soldiers over there. Norman foot soldiers, I believe they are like the main the main troops that you get. Yeah, they they're what you start you start with. I'm pretty sure. But yeah, we'll just quickly move over. So Wessex, um, it lost those feared axes, um, and it's actually repulsed. Oh no, Wessex of course is attacking. Duh. Um, Bedderborg is okay. 
So West Exhausted Field Axes. Uh, and that's kind of it. Everything else, um, it's pushed back all the other defenders. And Bedderborg looks like he's falling back already to these bridges. Oh, it's not going to be a bridge fight, is it, for the entire thing? Jeez, this is going to be brutal for Wessex. I do feel sorry for them already. Um, but I guess that's the way that Bedderborg's going to hold. I mean, it looks like the Norman's got some troops ready as well over here. It's like a joint operation on this side. So Norman Chosen Warriors. These guys still hold the ground, hold the line. That shield wall's not very good, though. I give that... A 5 out of 10. This bit here. This banner carrier is kind of ruining it. Um, but yeah, it does look like... There's not like much engagement's going on currently. There's a lot. I imagine there's probably a lot of crossbow fire. Or arch fire or has been. Who knows. Certainly Dyflin is... Uh, well, taking his time. As is Wessex. Um, so I might make a quick cut for you guys... Uh, just until the actual engagement begins. I feel like it's going to be a few minutes and I don't really want to just sit around doing absolutely nothing. So I'll see you guys in a moment. And here we go. The first clash of arms properly is between Dyflin and the Normans. We have some Eastman mailed swords here fighting against, uh, no, well, Norman foot soldiers, I believe. Um, oh, this might be the chosen ones. Oh, these are the foot soldiers. And it's so annoying that the Normans all have like a similar sort of outfit or uniform, I should say, not outfit. Uh, not wearing a dress. Um, but yeah, so... It's hard to tell. I mean, we've all got kite shields as well. I mean, they do look good. Hard to distinguish the difference, though, since they all have very similar styles. But yeah, I mean, I don't think they're going to break through this. Uh, I don't know, actually. Losing decisively. Maybe they will. Wow, Silver Chevron. Yeah, that Silver Chevron's definitely probably helping. They're going to need to send more up. They've got more ready. You've got Chosen Warriors next. Um... Over on this side, what's it looking like? I imagine oh, this is a thick line of main uh, infantry, yeah. This lot are holding a lot better, actually. Combat even. Jeez, look, and they got the wood kerns in here. Why have they sent them in? That's got to be a mistake. That's got to be a micro, but they're, they're dying quickly. But yeah, this is uh, one huge battle over here. Just look at the chaos in there. And this is this is how it how a uh, I don't know a Viking battle would happen. I guess you'd like you'd have your engagement to start with in the shield wall, and then after that, it all comes a bit to chaos, and everyone it's every man for himself. Berserkers look like they've been sent in already. Jeez, they really are sending everything in. Um, let's see where the Wessex has made a move. Uh, no, Wessex has not made a move yet, but I don't blame him because he's got a much harder task, I believe, with going across that. Uh, Going across that bridge. I do wonder whether this, they're doing better on this side with the Norman Chosen Archers than they are on this side. I don't know, actually. They've got archers over here as well. They've got crossbows here. These guys should be devastating. Yeah, they are now, actually. I think they are just starting to do the damage. Like, those uh, first, like, certain amount of hits were not really doing any damage and landing. Over here, which is just out of range of the crossbows, I presume. Um, this unit's still doing very well. They're going to need to support this unit soon. 67 men. It also looks like they've already supported the line already with extra troops, so it's... And they're still losing. Jeez! They're losing decisively. I mean, so are the guys attacking them. Yeah, this side here definitely needs sorting out. Um, they're going to they're gonna be breaking the line here in a moment. Any second now. I mean, the Normans actually have not got many reserves on that side. They've actually not got many reserves. Most of their army is engaged. Dyflin... It's kind of the same, actually. Dyphon's also got quite a lot of his army engaged. So between them two, it's going to be a massive, like, risk. So whoever wins that, uh, really, obviously, obviously, who wins, ever wins that is probably, like, this, these initial engagements going to win the battle, I imagine. Because, like, so much, so many uh, troops have already been sent in. If you lose, uh, like, this first stage, there's not much chance of you winning. Also, the Normans have to hold here because uh, otherwise, Bedderborg's compromised. I mean, in fairness, Bedderborg can really two-team against uh, Dyflin because Bedderborg only has to send minimal troops up to defend these, uh, defend these bridges. So, really, Wessex should be making as, like, a hard as push as possible to just try and occupy as many of Bedderborg's troops so Dyflin can inflict as much damage as possible on the Normans. Because he's inflicting damage. 
Um, certainly on that far flank over there, it looks like he's doing a lot of damage. I think these main infantry here over time will just die because they're just a lower class of infantry. They're not the best. They're like they're, if the foot soldiers, which I think is one of their highest tier, cannot win, then I don't think these uh, main infantry will hold. As the, I hate the trees in the way. Ruins the immersion. Fight it out. Berserker versus Norman. I mean, the Normans are also just Vikings. They were... The Normans were just... Uh, oh, that's a big... Oh my gosh, yep. There you go. The Normans are broken here in the center. That is huge. The Normans really need to send something. What are they going to send in cavalry? Betterborg might need to send some sword here back to flank. Yeah, and the, I mean, it looks like Dyflin's in. He's got these double silver chevron units. It's just a real concern for the Normans. They just can't upgrade their stuff to the same level. Or at all, by the looks of it. I don't know where the cavalry's going. But yeah, Sword Hersey now being turned around. Ordered to go in. And here comes the cavalry. It's going to probably charge on these first few and stop, isn't it? No, it got the whole way through. Very good. But yeah, so... A bit of an issue there. So now Dyflin really needs to pour more troops through. That's why he needs more troops like just ready back here. Because he's having to march... His entire army from all the way out here, all the way in. First, that's tiring his men out. And he's not then able to, like, take advantage of this huge gap that's now available. And so the Normans have really been let off there. I mean, I think they're going to flank this unit and kill it pretty easily. And look, there you go. The Normans setting up some elite uh, infantry. I presume they're going to go into that gap in a moment. But yes, yeah, so that was lucky for the Normans there. And there we go. Wessex is now engaged. We've got some select feared... Uh, swimming in here. In fairness, you could actually get, if they send another unit up, you could send that up and flank it round. Because uh, they're not really defending properly. Anglian Marauders, they sound like they might be uh, a radius unit. I don't know, they might not be. They sound cool though. I mean, uh, this unit looks also cool, Danelaw Spear Warriors. Oh, they, they're, they're, not, they're definitely not. But I like their officer. Or one of their unit men's units. He's got bear on there. A cheeky bear. Oh, dear. So we've got some archer fire into the side here. And the, uh, I mean, whether this is the best unit to be firing at, I don't know. It's a secured unit. It's not really going to cause you many issues in the future. Um, but I definitely would be starting to plug up this gap because Wessex is sending up some sex warriors now. Um, they're a bit more tough. And also, they just have the ability of just flanking here because they don't have to engage this unit. Will they do that though? I don't know. Uh, these Saix warriors also are pretty poorly ar uh, poorly armored. They look like they're just wearing like a padded tunic or something like that. Yeah, they look like they've just joined the fight here. I would definitely. I mean, this is a big blob now. This is possibly something worth firing at. Here we go. Anglian marauders now. I presume that they were waiting to charge into the flank. They wanted that charge bonus. Yeah, the, the second Saix warrior is going to charge. Oh, uh, skip on by, and it's going to go for those archers. Those Anglian Marauders need to charge. They've caught like one or two. But yeah, those archers are going to get caught. And we've got more coming in. I presume this is more Saix Warriors now. Yeah, this is a big blob. Uh, yeah, and those archers are starting to fall back. But those Anglian Marauders really need to get mobilized. And those ones probably. Oh, this will be a nice sandwich. Ever had Saix Warrior sandwich? Because you're about to witness it. Yeah, that's that was pretty nasty. I mean, they're still going through. Look at this. They're determined to catch these archers. And it's costing more and more Bedenberg troops to be committed. Which is kind of what they need to do. They need to get more troops like this in behind. And uh, just compromise their defense. I mean, it, over here, they're not doing so well. Um, they're already sending up Royal Guards. Jeez. Um, they've got some Chosen Fjord axes in here. I yeah, Chosen Fjord is also definitely a new, fact, a new unit, surely. You don't have Chosen and Fjord. Fjord are just like, yeah... Your farmers. So Chosen Fjord are the, the best of the farmers, I guess. I don't know. I really... I don't play Thrones enough to remember what units are with vanilla and then when, you, when I play uh, Radius, what units are for Radius. So there's some that I'm sure of and then some that I'm just like, what the heck? I would not know. And But yeah, so it looks like Dyflin's finally been dealt with in this rear. But... Those troops that were in the rear. Now I'm going to just go into the front line because more of the front is breaking. Um, so, I mean, it looks like the Normans are still having issues here.
But yeah, so I mean, the Dyphon's doing a good job here. He's cutting through. And uh, I'm surprised Bedenborg's not sending more up. It looks like he's sending something up now. Um, these are like some Huskiles that could be going up. Uh, they definitely will be needed in this front line. I like, I'm like. i debating whether even like attacking here is like even worthwhile. Like, uh, or defending here is even worthwhile because they're not even sending anything there. You could just keep one unit there, but this unit might want to like commit to the front line over here. Okay, so we're back at a similar time to what was uh, going on like before. Uh, it was just being a little bit laggy and like the music was cutting out, so I was decided that we'll just reload it and uh, I'd give you an actual like a proper quality uh, that this battle deserves. I don't want to like half ass it uh, for you guys. I'd rather do it properly. So yeah, we did a quick cut and you saw like some berserkers just charging in there. I hadn't realized that the Normans had actually flanked round. Uh, with some cavalry and it tried to surround uh, like the Eastman uh, male swords engaged here um, But yeah, so those ca that cavalry's now dead as you can now see this uh, berserkers came in and murdered them and now it's kind of uh, just down to well Just the, the line of infantry again, uh, which is very thin uh, For the Normans very very thin. I still don't know. Okay. They have sent it over There was a unit on this bridge that they finally sent it. I think it's this unit here chosen with swords or warriors <laughs> But the uh, lines for the Normans are thinning quickly. I mean, this unit here is... I mean, I, I think this unit has br uh, should break in a moment. Um, but they might want to send up these more main infantry. Over on this side, how's it looking? How is it looking? Uh, not good, I've just realized. Dyflin is in behind. Dyflin has broken through. I did think that that flank over there, it's the furthest away from the arches. They were going to have success there with Dyflin. Um... But yeah, so it does look like the Normans on this flank might be uh, surrounded. This cavalry needs to charge in. I've just realized this cavalry here that just stood here. Charge it in. I mean, you want to get a better charge than that now, but charge it in. We've got more Norman elite infantry coming up. But the Normans have got like no infantry left. That is it. I think that's those last two units. Uh, the Normans are breaking here. Um, Bedderborg is slowly sending troops over. He needs to send more over because Bedderborg. I don't think Bedderborg needs all of this Danelaw Huskars appearing, all these Jarls chosen. He might need to send the elite stuff in to go and fight Dyflin. I think his uh, mid tier stuff could probably hold back Wessex for a long, long time. Look at how much Wessex is committing. He's committed like loads of troops in here. And if you just focus these guys down with archers, you're looking, you're looking great. But yeah, Bedderborg I think needs to send more over. I mean, he's got Danelaw Huskars here now. He's got Sword Hearse here. And he's got these uh, Royal Spears, which I don't think... I don't think uh, Wessex is coming across this bridge anytime soon. Not a chance. But yeah, a good flank here coming from uh, the Danelaw Huskars. Oh, this will actually be very brutal. Danelaw Huskars, very good, uh, like, shock infantry sort of unit. So them charging into the rear, which side would they... I think they'll go this side. Um, but yeah. They'll, them charging in, that should do some devastating work. Maybe routing these troops. I don't know. There are berserkers in this. So they might just fight to the death. What is actually left in here? I mean, no, these units are pretty... Look at that. Eastman Elite Swords. Five of them left. That's how... Look, these units are just not going to break, apparently. 29. 63. 63 Berserkers. Yeah, these units are just not breaking. That is shocking. And these Daniel Huskars need to go in somewhere. They need to hurry up and get in there before, like, Dyphon sends more up. I mean, it looks like uh, Woodcone's been routed by the general back there. These... Betterborg, send these in. Send them in. Oh, here they go. Here we go. And, yeah, that's it. That's going to surround that unit. Not a bad unit to go for. You'll quickly uh, route this unit. I think these were uh, East, one of those uh, Eastman uh, Royal Guards. Royal Guards. Jeez. And they're finally breaking. But Dyflin's pretty low. Um, I'm not I'm not sure if he's got enough to break through. If uh, Better Ball keeps sending stuff up. He might break through this side. Um, that, that is a big clumping of infantry there, though. So, I mean, definitely want to be focusing that down with every area you possibly got. Um, what have we got here? We've got Woodkern to it. I just start sending the cavalry round, like the general. Let's just send them round. Like, what have they got here? More veteran hunters? Yeah, they've got some cavalry as well, but... Like, I'd just go for it. Like, the Normans' morale's already shook. You might as well just go for it with 
uh, the general go mop up all the uh, archers. But they think that this side's finished by the looks of it. They're sending the archers over to the other side. I mean, it's more of a concern over on that side. Um, they are starting to... Oh, yeah, they're mopping this up here. With better bugs help with these Royal uh, Danelaw Huskars. They are mopping up uh, what's left of Diflin on this flank. Yeah, losing decisively. Using decisively. Losing. Yeah, not looking good there. West is on the other hand. He's having a hard time. But he's actually pushing uh, the lines back. I mean... I think he did get further at one point. I think he's slowly been pushed back himself now. But he was a... Uh... Oh my gosh, there's so many bodies in there. But yeah, he's made a bit of a bridgehead. Maybe he wants to attack on that other side. Maybe he wants to attack on that third side, probably. I don't think he will, because he's got no troops position there. But I would certainly do it, because... Um, it... He certainly should have done it, I, I think. Because uh, it would have occupied Bedeborg's troops... So Dyfling could have beaten Nor the Normans here. Because that's the only reason why no Normans are still alive there, I believe. I don't believe they were going to beat Dyfling. Uh, Searle Archers are getting absolutely destroyed by, um, well, Armoured Archers. Yeah, these guys are pretty nasty. What have we got here? Jarl's Noble Axemen. They sound like they might be a new unit. Chosen Fjord. The, the Chosen Farmers are in here now. Doing their bit. But yeah, look at this view. This is... Just imagine being like a soldier here. You just like look down. And you're just like... It's going to be a busy day today. We've got a lot of men to kill. Unless you get killed yourself. Then you're... Uh, you're in a bit of a... Well, you're, you're just dead, aren't you? So you don't have, can't do anything. And they're breaking. There you go. There's more Wessex troops breaking because of the arch fire. But... Oh, well, actually the arch is firing all the way back there. So no. Just out of pure exhaustion, and they've had a day. They need their need their dinner or their lunch or whatever. Whatever time this is set at. They're like, yep, lunch break, we'll be back in five. But yeah, I mean I don't think Wessex is Really making much effort, like, much of a difference with these two fronts. I think if you open up a second front, especially now the Normans are setting so much back over here, that the Normans are now just desperately trying to get stuff over here because they realise that they're going to, like, die here. Um, like, now is the time for Wessex to strike because there's just two lone Bedeborg units here. I mean, obviously Bedeborg can send more over from here, but, I mean, he's got to... He's still got a lot to worry about here, to be honest. I mean... There's definitely... Oh, Wessex needs to take advantage of this. There's a gap. I think he is. I think he's seen it. Royal Huskar's now going up. Oh, Bedeborg's gone across the river. I didn't even realise. He's come across. It looks like it's going to be some Royal Huskars versus Royal Huskars. Maybe. Or certainly a Huskar unit. What are these? Danelaw Huskars. So, at Big Axe Men versus Big Axe Men. But, I mean, I'd certainly be wanting to push here now. Pressure this point. It's definitely worth a try. Also, Dyflin has got cavalry somewhere. Has Dyflin gone AFK or something? I don't know. But, like, Dyflin's got cavalry um, in the woods somewhere. He's got his general here as well. Send them up. You can then Wessex and compression from this side. You can attack on in the rear with cavalry. Maybe you have to deal with better borgs. But you could break that, break, they could break this point. The Normans are fully just gone. And, uh, yeah. That's a real mi missed opportunity, I think. I mean, it's still there, but I don't know how, for how long. Wessex is, uh, having a rough time now. I mean, he's Earl Veteran Thanes. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not going to get through this. I like how I come over here. It was nice and bright. The sun, there you go. It's a, The sun's out again. Then the clouds just cover it. The audacity of the weather. I'm trying to trying to show my uh, show you guys uh, a brilliant battle. Kind of the cloud ruining it. They also might want to try and burn more of this city. I'm just thinking. I'm surprised that these units haven't just walked off and done it. Like they usually do, walk off, just go and burn some buildings. Because that would certainly help with morale. Certainly, every little bit right now might be needed to break through Bedeborg. But, I mean, look at the balance of power. We've lost uh, 
well, about 13,000 troops, and we've got about 7,000 to go. Attackers have only got 3,000. The defenders are actually have got the more troops now. They were in the uh, disadvantage, like they would had the less troops, but now they've uh, got more. Did they break that unit? Wow, they did. They broke those Royal Huskars, did the Dane Royal Huskars. Jeez, and now they're having to fight some Royal Spearmen. I'd send more troops across, flank the Spearman unit. Better ball could take the uh, offensive, I think, a little bit. Certainly in some areas. I don't know if this was a misclick by the Royal Huskars, uh, the Daniel Huskars to go across. But if it was, then it paid off. They took out one Huskar unit. And they're going to do damage to the Spear unit. I mean, Spears are just... I mean, it's only because it's got more numbers, but I mean, Spears are pretty useless on the Assault. But they do look good. In their chainmail. Could focus these guys down with archers. Not a bad angle. These are royal spears as well, so it's a good target. Three three gold chevrons. That probably will improve their ability to fight. Yeah, look at this. Normans are really rushing stuff here. Is this all archers? There's a... There is... No, this is all Norman infantry. Look just like from a glance that it was all archers. There is archers in here. I presume they're out of ammo. He's got cow... His generals up here just, you know, just minding his own business. Better book. Oh dear, coming around behind. I was wondering where those units came from, but yeah, that's gonna that's gonna certainly probably put the final nail in the coffin for Dyflin. Yeah, Dyflin may be in a bit of trouble now. He was doing so well as well, he was breaking through, doing a lot of damage. Um, I think there's just a few old missed opportunities, like the holes in the line he could have gone through with more troops. He needed to like have his troops closer to the front line, his reserves. Because he was, like, marching all this way, wearing himself out to start with, and also, like, wasn't getting that, like, uh, taking, like, advantage of any uh, opportunity. Like, like when the gaps opened up here, he'd have to march more troops from back here. And, like, by that point, the Normans had probably surrounded the unit had broken through and refilled the line with the help of Bedderborg. Uh But, yeah, so it looks like Wessex is coming across now. We've got Royal Spears, Royal, uh, Noble Swords. I mean... Bedderborg's let this fully open. I mean, I guess it's part of his plan. He can just sort of attack from three fronts when they get up here. Which is kind of what he's been doing anyway. You can see from like the outline of the bodies what's how they've kind of done this. And here we go. Berserkers now going in. Uh, that's not a bad idea. Send some Berserkers into the flank. That'll certainly uh, tear them up. Good to see how well these Noble Swords fight since it's a new unit. Uh, I'm going to say not so well against Berserkers. But that's just my personal opinion. Berserkers are still, even with Radius here, one of the strongest fact, uh, units in the game. Angry men who just only know how to take it out with violence. But yeah, I mean, you can see what their plan was. I mean, they've also got archers here as well. It's not helping this whole situation. Losing. Um, but yeah, this is quite a good uh, strategy. Like, you have troops up here, like behind this tree. You have some to here on this flank. And all they've got a massive blob here of troops ready. And then you just charge in, get the charge ability, and you can attack on three flanks. And you, uh, well, just devastate, really. You devastate whatever comes in. They seem to have broken through here, have the... Uh, Wessex forces ever so slightly, but the Berserkers are messing them up now. They've got Royal Huskars being focused down in the rear as well by Armoured Archers. But yeah, the Berserkers are just cleaning them up. I mean, we've got more swords coming in. Whether these guys will make a difference, who knows. Wessex is starting to look, run out of uh, reinforcements himself. I mean, he has got a lot of, like, Royal Bodyguard back here. Triple Gold Chevron. Noble Swords, Triple Gold Chevron. He's still got a lot of nasty stuff. Um, but I think Bedderborg's got enough reserves. Uh, he's obviously got this bridge all the way over here as well. Are they finally going to go for this bridge? I think they are. I think Wessex is finally going to go for this bridge over here. Realizes it's a very viable option. I mean, they've got no chevrons. Like, that unit here, three gold chevrons. And it's, against, it's a sword unit against spears. So, swords will beat spears. And with the chevron ability, or not ability, but like, experience as well and boost, that'll they'll mince through them. And same with the swords there. They'll probably mince through them. And the Normans... Yeah, the Normans are long gone, uh, really. Okay, so it looks like Dyflin has come from his slumber and is 
sending the rest of his troops inside. Uh, I don't know exactly where the cavalry is. I swear he had cavalry house somewhere. Unless it's died before I've realized, which he might have done. It quite possibly had died. Um, who knows? But yeah, I mean, this is the this is the death of Dyflin. I'm not even quite sure where they are. Because Bedderborg's now here, so there's a lot of Norse. I guess, here's a Dyflin man. There's quite a few here. Fighting the Normans. These, the Chosen Swords seem to be able to fight a match, but, like, there's still a lot of Normans dead down here. Like, majority Normans as well. Like, that is a layer of Normans. That's what Alfred Godwinson would have wanted. But hey, he got an arrow to the eye. I know it's the wrong period, but you gotta you gotta mention Alfred when uh, you mention the Normans, I guess. And there you go, Dyflin's infantry's all broken there. Um, apart from his general, he's got some archers over here, but that's not gonna do much. And here we go, finally, I, finally, Wessex is uh, attacking this bridge. I feel like when there's three bridges, uh, you gotta attack all three bridges. Attacking two just makes the whole. The whole job of defending them a lot easier. Uh, and here we go. This shield wall will be nice. A nice shield wall. Let's get a, a view of that. Oh, that's, that's alright. It was a very slow charge. Just realised. Uh, but yeah. I don't know. It would be nice if you could make the ability. So like that line's forming shield wall. Then the next couple of ranks of this, uh, for, of this unit was then formed another shield wall. And then that like... Those three final lines there formed another shield wall. Like, you'd never break through, but it'd really be really cool. Um, Bedderborg sent more troops over, so we've got a Huskarls here now. The Hearse is ready here. Um, these Danelaw Spears are actually firing okay. I think they will lose over time. Um, these Noble Spears, these Noble Swords, sorry, are just pretty OP. Oh, there you go, losing decisively. Didn't take long. But that's what they could have done if... Uh, like, I think they needed to do it earlier when this huge push was going on. Like, where all these how all these bodies came about. Um, because Bedderborg was a lot more occupied with that um, than probably worrying about that. And also, this push also probably could have come when Dyflin was still alive. Um, because it would have meant that Bedderborg couldn't have sent the troops to the front line here. But would have had to send them to help against uh, this Wessex front. But that's just, that's just my opinion. I think, like, a bit more... Uh, Coordination from the attackers, and they could have had some real success here. Some real success. But I mean, it looks like they're going to flank in here with these spears into the side of these noble swords, and that is uh, probably going to probably nullify this uh, sword unit. Because again, I think this is one of the very elite ones. Yeah, triple gold chevron. They are actually beating Jarl's noble axemen. Uh, I presume berserkers are still in here, but they might all be dead. Um, yeah, I think they might all be dead. Armoured archers are now fighting, though, in fairness. So, I mean, they are pretty low at better Borgen troops. Um, it's going to be close. It's going to be close. I mean, actually, I say that. It's close in that choke point. There's an entire another choke point here, which is now freed up that better Borg has so many men for. Um, I presume enemy general dead. Yep, that's uh, Dyflins. I've got Berserkers here that are just... Or Daniel Huskars, in fact. Berserkers and Daniel Huskars, I keep mixing up. Berserkers have... A shield in hand. Hillscars have it on their back. And Normans, the Normans still have ammo, which is surprising. I usually, when I play Thrones, run out of ammo in about two seconds. But I guess if you, they brought like a lot of range units, so they probably didn't have to like limit their ammo. But there you go, Norman generals fallen. I actually think to friendly fire that might have been. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of surprising and kind of ironic. As I was just talking about the ammo. Save your ammo because uh, you might need it late game just to shoot your own general. But yeah, I mean, I think these these archers won't hold. Even with this, with like a lack of general, I think the Normans will still beat these guys. Yeah, cavalry running down archers is pretty... It's pretty standard of what's going to happen there. And the Normans now are sending troops back this way. So they can relieve this uh, choke point. I mean, which they actually might need to do. Like, these noble swords are actually losing pretty hard. Here we go. They're finally burning more of this uh, town, which they needed to do a long time ago. Supplies minus one and melee skill minus one. They need to, like, do that more often. It's a good idea, I think. It's something that, like, 
I don't think enough players take advantage of, like, in Thrones. It's like, they added it for a reason. It's to give the attackers another, like, way to win, almost. Or give them more of an advantage. Um, and some, I don't think some players use it enough. Um, like, that, like, melee skill and, like, morale damage might be what clinches it in the end. Uh, like, imagine if, like, Wessex had gone burnt that entire, his, like, that side of the city, like, down. And he has, like, gold shit, like, triple gold chevron units. They would have been, like, horrifying for the defenders then to, de like, face. Like, with their damage, m melee skill and morale, um, and already being outclassed, and then outclassed by, like, just chevrons. I know thrones as chevrons, like, are ridiculous anyway. Like, you can earn them pretty quickly in one single battle, but... It would have still been pretty horrifying. Like, you've got to earn them first you, um, by killing people. But if you can't kill them if you're fighting triple gold chevron stuff. But here you go. Yeah, there's a big push across the river now. They've got to fight this one unit of uh, elite axemen. Let's see how they do in battle this uh, new unit. They'll probably do okay against those crossbows that have been sent in to die. I won't lie. But uh, here come the Norman's chosen swords. I, I think they might beat all this, though. This is... Uh, actually, no. Maybe not. That's quite a lot of stuff now. Quite a lot of stuff. And Bedeborg's now sending stuff across the flank. But good things that the Normans did send stuff here. I mean, they're actually breaking through here. Like, so like... Like I've already said about five million times. They should have pushed on that bridge. Um, but yeah, so that looks like it's probably going to be the end of the battle. It's just going to... I might fast forward ever so slightly. Um, because it does look like... Wessex is basically finished. He's sending his general in now, but I mean, he's now been contained in like three different areas by Bedeborg, who still has like plenty of reserves. I don't know what's he sending over here. Anglian marauders. Anglian marauders. Uh, he's sending Jarl's nobles all the way around. He's going to surround the general, who, uh, yeah, is desperately trying to get through. He might get through, in fairness, because he is a triple gold chevron and he's fresh. Uh, it looks like he's pushing through. Yeah, that's a push through. Uh,. Yeah, that's that's not okay. I mean, I know it's late game, but that's just that's just not okay, really. And there we go. Yeah, royal bodyguard, two hundred twenty-eight men. Jeez, in that unit, um, it serves him right, I think, for pushing through his units now, losing decisively. He's losing a lot of men. Shouldn't be doing that. That's a total war. No, no. Don't push through. People won't appreciate it. And um, they're recapturing the point. Yeah, again, I, this is another thing. Capturing points. I don't know if there's another one. Yeah, there wasn't one for Dyphon to capture. Where is the other point? There's usually three. There's the main one there. Maybe there was only two. There's only two points. Okay. Well, good thing they did capture. That might have helped with, mel uh, with morale, but... Like, I'm not really sure, like, how much it massively did. The Normans certainly were outmatched and outclassed, and that might have helped. It might help to take out them, but I think Bedeborg had a, did a good job. Obviously, if he defended, like, over here, he may not have done so well. It would have been interesting to see him, like, fight a bit more here. Um, maybe take some guy, more guys down. Then, and then defend on the bridge. Because I think he's got loads left. He's got, like, masses left. Yeah, like, he's got 2,000 men left. You can say the majority of them are better Borgs as well. Elite Axeman here losing slightly now. It's just, just not helping. They're getting flanked. Big shame. But, yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed the battle. Um, if you have watched this far, which I... Uh, well, thank you for. Um, I hope you do leave a like. Subscribe if you haven't already and you're new around here. And leave a comment to show your support if you want to see more Thrones action. Um, I'll try and get as much as I can. Obviously, not as many people play it, so it's hard to get as many replays. But I uh, do try my hardest uh, to get replays from people. That I know to play it quite often. Um, but yeah, so that's going to wrap it up. Uh, it's a period victory for the Normans and... Bedeborg. So well done to them. We'll have a look at the end results quickly. So I'd just like to thank Satchex, who was playing as the Normans, for sending it in. He had a really rough game, um, in fairness. His uh, Normans were like outmatched. Um, his general did well, though. I think he got most of those kills from running down archers. 338 for him. Um, he's got his... Uh, what are these? What are these? Uh, he's, uh, yeah, I know they're enemy troops. Um, Norman Elite Infantry getting 230 kills. Some more Norman Elite Infantry here getting... A solid amount of kills as well. And then he's got his... Uh, I presume these are the Chosen Warriors. Yeah, I thought the Chosen Warriors might uh, held a bit better than the Elites. Um, but they didn't get as many kills in fairness. His Archers obviously did excellent. 
I mean, his crossbow is 301. Jeez. Um, 216 with his bows here. 224 with that bow unit. Um, yeah, his archers, I think, helped massively in that. So he did really well there, getting 4,012 kills. Better Bork, who's played by uh, Jaku uh, here, um, getting uh, 5,000 kills. I mean, his army definitely saved the day. He's got a uh, Jarl's Chosen here, 398, nearly 400 kills. Jeez. He's got a Sword Herdman here, a pretty mid tier unit, getting 227 kills. That's what happens when you put him on a bridge. You've got Berserk, uh, no, Jarl's Noble here as well. Well, did I already say that? I don't know. 304, yeah. Oh, no, they're, they're axes, that's why. Duh. Charles Chosen, uh, Charles Noble, Jarl's Noble Axeman, uh, 347. Uh, my brain's clearly frying at this point. We've got uh, Dane Law Huskals here, 340. Um, so they did well. His archers also did very well getting into the 200s. Um, so excellent to him there. Um, so yeah, we'll have a quick look at uh, Nick, Emmy uh, 1310, who's playing as Dyflin. I thought Dyflin did a very good job. Um, it's just a bit unfortunate that Bedeborg did come to the support in the end. I think he would have knocked out uh, Sachex as the Normans. Um, he's got an uh, elite uh, swordsman here, getting 243. And he's got, um, what else has he got that's done quite well? He's got uh, some Berserkers here, I believe. These Berserkers, these might actually, no. Eastman Royal Guards, 213. They did well. He's got another one there, actually, got 247. Um, and then he's... Uh, Archers didn't do so well. I yeah, I don't know why he brought so many archers. He might have been better just bring more infantry. Um, certainly, instead of these jabbies, I don't think jabbies are very good in thrones. Um, and then his cavalry, which I presume did charge them. I think I missed it. Um, they just got massacred. A bit of a shame there. And then King Kahona, um, who's playing as Wessex. His general, surprisingly, even with the push through, was getting got 116 kills. Um, Royal Thane's getting... 213 that's oh no they're noble sword sorry not royal thane's getting 142 that's the difference between like elite vanilla there and uh like the radius unit there 213 they did very well then he's uh another one actually another one here got 230 so that's even better is um what are these i presume these are the royal guards um 294 excellent and then what is this elite axeman 260 did very well there and then his archers again i don't know why the attackers brought so many archers i think that you just especially uh in thrones you just like, end up in a choke point and you're gonna get focused on archers also being so low in armor they're easy to focus down uh by the defenders because they've got the defending advantage but i hope you guys enjoyed if you did please leave a like subscribe if you're new around here and leave a comment to show your support as i've already said thank you to Sachex again for sending this in and until next time legionnaires